Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. Our guest today is Hikmet Hajiyev. He is a senior foreign policy advisor to the president of Azerbaijan. He joins us from Baku. Thank you very much for being on our show, sir. Thank you. Mr. Hajiyev, last week fighting erupted at the border between your country and Armenia, claiming at least 16 lives, including an Azerbaijani general. This is the worst round of violence between the two countries since 2016. Uh, your country and Armenia have been at loggerheads for decades now over the disputed Nagorno-Karabakh uh, region. Calm has more or less prevailed in the past few days. However, Armenia has accused Azerbaijan of again attacking one of its position at the sector of the border where there was fighting last week. Is this true? What is your response? Uh, thank you for this opportunity. First of all, uh, I would like to highlight that more than it's now 30 years, Armenia's military aggression was in a war unleashed by Armenia against Azerbaijan continues. As a result of this war, Armenia occupied Nagorno-Karabakh and seven adjacent regions of Azerbaijan, and one million Azerbaijanis become refugees and IDPs. And the recent border uh, incident is not just a sporadic act that happened in the border of two countries. It's simply continuation of the Armenian's military aggression against Azerbaijan. And we have perceived it as an act of aggression, act of illegal use of force, an act of the military provocation on a deliberate manner perpetrated by Armenian side. And uh, Armenian side always tries to uh, hide their responsibility for this crime. But I also want to return back to the last two years' development, which has uh, provided ground for such an offensive by Armenian side. When Armenia's new prime minister, Pashinyan, came to power, Azerbaijan made a first statement and saying that if Pashinyan pursues a different policy rather than the previous uh, rulers of Armenia, there could be some progress in the negotiation process. I would like also to highlight the Dushanbe meeting of my president uh, with the Armenian prime minister, and that time Armenia asked for further strengthening of the P, uh, ceasefire regime and also providing conducive environment for the uh, progress of the negotiation process. Azerbaijan demonstrated this in a good will and constructive engagement. We have provided all of the tenets to move the negotiation process forward. But what has happened? Armenia adopted very offensive military strategy. That's in a strategy uh, described by Armenia's Minister of Defense, new territories and new wars, and also preemptive attack against Azerbaijan. And uh, recently, also, Armenia adopted new, very racist, and I also regret to say that chauvinistic national security strategy. And also, Armenian Prime Minister said that Nagorno-Karabakh is Armenia. That has a statement undermining in the negotiation process. That's also a statement that's in a complete disrespect to the OSC Minsk Group co-chairs countries, that's in a mediating negotiation process. So, uh, Armenia is accusing you of warmongering, of attacking. You're saying it's Armenia. Do you believe this was just an incident? Or what is Armenia's goal according to you? Armenia actually is seeking multiple goals by uh, uh, launching this military offensive against Azerbaijan. And a fundamental fact, I would like to reiterate that Armenia's military occupation continues against Azerbaijan, and 20% territories of Azerbaijan is under the occupation. We have but this four was UN far from the area of Nagorno-Karabakh. As, as if that is not enough, Armenia launched yet another offensive against Azerbaijan in the border areas of two countries. What are the reasons for Armenian side? And first of all, for Azerbaijan side, we don't have any military purpose and objective in the border area of two countries. It's in the strategic interest of Azerbaijan to have the escalation, to have a calmness on the border area, because it's also strategically important for Azerbaijan, and I believe for the European Union or for our EU partners as well, because all major transportation and strategic communication links of Azerbaijan between Georgia and Azerbaijan are running through the East-West corridor, but it's geographically very close to this area where this incident happened. And why Armenia has started it? The one first, uh, number one goal from Armenian side was to deflect the attention from the co-fundamental Nagorno-Karabakh-Armenia-Azerbaijan conflict issue. Secondly, to, pre uh, to create a new hotbed of conflict in the region. And third, Armenia also in an ill manner tried to involve other third parties, other political military alliances to the conflict process. That's in a yet another risky adventure uh, sought by Armenian side to undermine regional peace and security. Armenia also by doing that try to negatively affect or pose threat to the East-West corridor that Armenia strategically is out. And also they try to capture new hates or maybe new territories, which also derives from the Armenia's new uh, defense uh, strategy. 
Uh, that another most important issue is also about the deterioration of the social economic situation in Armenia. And by doing that, Armenia also tried to deflect attention. And also, I believe by doing that, Armenia also tries to undermine the negotiation process to bring back the negotiation process and all tack to the zero square so that not to allow any movement in the negotiation process for the resolution of the conflict. And they also see some political diplomatic pressure on them about the withdrawal of troops from the occupied territories of Azerbaijan. Right. But your president himself uh, said a few weeks ago that he felt uh, the negotiations were uh, going nowhere. And uh, we've seen also uh, threats uh, from Azerbaijan to strike a nuclear power plant in Armenia. Uh, so it seems that uh, Azerbaijan is also uh, not really inclined uh, for, uh, to, towards a peaceful uh, solution because it feels the negotiations are going nowhere. Uh, first, I wanted to start with the uh, Metsomar nuclear power plant. Actually, this statement was made by the low-level military officer from Azerbaijan side on an emotional basis. In no way it does reflect uh, the position, official position of Azerbaijani government. I would like also to reiterate that in no way uh, targeting any um, uh, critical infrastructure from Azerbaijan side was in the uh, interest of Azerbaijan side. It's in a completely against uh, to the vision and strategy of Azerbaijan side. But on the contrary, we have seen such a policy from Armenian side attacking civilians and also targeting Azerbaijan civilian uh, infrastructure. Uh, and also as a result of this recent uh, uh, provocation that has been committed by Armenian side, we have uh, one civilian has been killed. Armenia also made in a public statement that they are in their uh, strategy uh, targeting Azerbaijan's oil and gas installations and also Azerbaijan's former, uh, Armenia's former president also said that uh, they would like to, by using of the Iskander missiles and trying to uh, target Azerbaijan's oil and gas installations and so on. But as regards the negotiation process uh, itself, uh, Azerbaijan is committed to the Minsk process for the resolution of the conflict. But of course, our expectation is that there should be meaningful and substantive talks about the resolution of the conflict. And there should be timetable for the uh, withdrawal of Armenian troops from the occupied territories. Unfortunately, so far, we haven't seen any tangible results in the negotiation process. Armenian side tries to hide them or camouflage themselves behind the negotiation process and also annex sovereign territories of Azerbaijan, but under the Armenia's military occupation, and also conduct illegal activities, including the illegal settlements in the seized lands of Azerbaijan. Do you Azerbaijan, believe, uh, do you believe, therefore, sir, expects uh, from the old Kochia country. Sorry, uh, do you believe that yes, Russia please. and Georgia are playing a negative role by maybe pushing Armenia towards what you're describing? No, actually, Georgia is a strategic partner of Azerbaijan, and Azerbaijan and Georgia, we are neighboring countries and having very close uh, relation and partnership. And we always said that Azerbaijan-Georgian cooperation is a, a model of the regional cooperation for other countries. I do also hope that uh, political military leadership of Armenia, uh, Armenia will have uh, such a wisdom to learn from such an effective regional cooperation other than seeking the policy of occupying territories of other neighboring countries. As regards Russia, Russia is Azerbaijan's neighbor, and we also have very good stable relations and strategic partnership ties. Uh, and also in this process, Russia, as a, uh, on a bilateral basis, and also as a member of the OSC Minsk Group uh, process, tried to uh, somehow de-escalate situation and also launched intensive dialogue with uh, Baku and Yerevan. But of right. course, in the Minsk process, our expectation that all Kochia countries together as a one institution should redouble their efforts based on their man mandate to focus particularly on the substantive part of the negotiation process and based on their man mandate ensure liberation of Azerbaijan's territories from the uh, Armenia's occupation and ensure implementation of the United Nations Security Council. Now we also see once again Armenian side tries to bring technical elements to the negotiation process to hide their crimes that have recently they committed against an Azerbaijan and also to deviate the negotiation process for, from its in a core track. As in a key fundamental track here is about an withdrawal of Armenia's troops. Last question, sir, because we're running out of time. Armenia has accused Turkey and especially its president, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, of actually being the one behind this latest tension. In a way, he's saying that your country is obeying Turkey's orders. What's your response? Uh, Azerbaijan is an independent country, uh, and actually that's a main feature uh, that uh, differs Azerbaijan from Armenia. 
and Azerbaijan is an independent country and pursues an independent foreign policy. But that question needs to be asked to Armenian side. Why you have launched uh, such an offensive operation? Why you have launched with uh, military adventure that also resulted in the casualties in the Armenian armed forces that Armenia tries to hide from the international community? That's also as a question for Armenia, not to be the hostage of the fabricated history that they try to believe. As regards the role of the Turkey, and Turkey is a regional country, and Turkey is also a member of the Minsk group process. In general, we are where we have an 11 countries, and our expectation that all of these countries should play uh, their role in the uh, resolution of the conflict. And uh, Turkey also made a statement and also condemned Armenia's military aggression against Azerbaijan. It was only not only the Turkey and other countries and institutions as well, including the 120 strong non-aligned movement and also Organization of Islamic Cooperation and some other institutions. We also welcome statement from the European Union and uh, individual member countries of the Minsk Group co-chairs that called for the de-escalation and restraint. And we do hope that Armenia finally understand uh, the realities of the region and will refrain such a provocative actions and also withdraw the troops from the occupied territories of Azerbaijan. That's in a demand of the UN Security Council resolutions. That's in a demand of the international law. That's also should be, uh, you know, it's a de de derived from the justice. Just a very last question quickly as a conclusion. Are you optimistic yes, that please. calm will prevail? Uh, actually, we are expecting from Armenian side. At any moment, we are expecting provocation from Armenian side. Because if you would like to see, to understand and fully the conflict, it reminds us, it's reminiscent of the first full war scenario of the border of between France and Germany. Unfortunately, in the 21st century, in the OSC area, we have an trench war scenario. 100,000 Armenian soldiers in the sovereign territories of Azerbaijan as occupying power. Soldiers are sitting face to face in the trench. If you have an illegal foreign military occupation, any kind of escalation and provocation can happen, and it also can bring, bring unexpected uh, negative consequences. Therefore, it's a time and a question to Armenian side. Withdraw your troops and respect the international border, borders and respect your neighbors. And finally, by doing that, we can ensure peace and security and stability in the region of Caucasus. Azerbaijan is ready to play its role. Azerbaijan is also ready to constructively engage on all partners for the resolution of the conflict, for ensuring sustainable peace and security and cooperation in our region. But isn't enough is enough. Armenia must end this in occupation. In the 21st century, we can't change internationally recognized borders of states by use of force. It's unacceptable. Hikmet Hajiyev, thank you very much for your time and thank you for watching this interview here on Friends 24.